this is Laura Hammock from the Marble Jar channel and today we're going to go over how to use the parental restrictions that are built right into the iPhone and iPad. Okay, so today we're going to explore the parental controls that Apple has built right into their iOS devices. They can actually be quite powerful. I know a family that essentially transformed an iPhone temporarily back into a dumb phone for their daughter just by using these controls. More about that later on. Okay, go into settings, general, and then restrictions. By default, the restrictions are all turned off. So in order to make any changes in this area, you will need to create a passcode. Choose to enable restrictions and select a four digit passcode. This is something you will not be sharing with your kid, so make a note of it somewhere private. The first area allows you to choose which native apps you're going to allow on your kid's device. By native, I mean the ones that come pre-installed by Apple. So you will notice that there are some apps that are native apps that are missing from the, this list. Most notably, you cannot turn off phone calling, texting, or photos. Here are the apps you can turn off. Safari or the internet browser, camera, Siri and dictation, FaceTime or video calling, AirDrop, which allows you to send files to other iOS devices in your vicinity, CarPlay, which connects your device to some cars, the iTunes Store, where you can buy music and, and movies, Apple Music Connect, which from what I can tell allows artists to upload music, the iBook Store, podcasts, and news. Basically, if you turn off an app, it just disappears from the screen like it never existed. Cool, right? This is the only way to delete these. You'll notice that if you try to delete apps the normal way, these native apps will wiggle, but they won't give you a little X um, to delete them. The only way is through this restrictions screen. Note that some native apps can be deleted the regular way, like mail, contacts, and calendar. At the very end of this section are three options. The first is installing apps. So if you turn this off, your kids can't install any additional apps on the phone. Next is deleting apps. You might want to turn this on if you have, for example, a monitoring app installed on the device that you don't want your kid to mess with. The third is in-app purchases. This may be the most important thing in the whole restrictions area. Turning off in-app purchases means that your kid cannot buy coins, gems, upgrades, or whatever tempting thing they're hawking inside of these individual game apps. Almost everyone has or has heard of a horror story about having a crazy credit card bill due to in-app purchases. I read about a seven-year-old who spent $6,000 on upgrading dinosaurs in the Jurassic Park app. Kids don't have great self-control, and even if they are older than seven, it's better to eliminate this as an option. For what it's worth, Apple will generally refund you if you complain, because even they seem to understand the immorality of tempting elementary school kids in this way. The next section is allowed content. So first you're gonna pick the country whose ratings you want to use, and then you can set content restrictions for music, podcasts and news, movies, TV shows, books, apps, Siri, and websites. Each of these has a rating system that is slightly different. Movies, TV shows, and apps have a more granular breakdown by age, and um, music, Siri, and websites just have a toggle between explicit on or explicit off. Um, so also you can note, uh, note that you can determine whether Siri searches the web or not from this area. Under websites, you can choose between limiting adult content um, with the option to allow or restrict specific websites, or you can choose to only allow a list of specific websites like just Disney Channel and National Geographic for littler kids. You can also add some websites to this list as well. Um, the area for password settings is useful determining whether your kids need a passcode for purchases and in-app purchases and free apps. And you can choose whether you need the passcode every time or whether you get that 15 minutes um, of like open season before it asks again. Uh, I would make it every time. Otherwise, your kids will ask permission for an innocuous app and then they might download a bunch of unapproved stuff during that 15 minute open bonanza. The next area down is privacy. So this determines whether your kid can make changes to the privacy decisions that are already made in settings and then privacy. 
basically what this is, this governs whether you can share location services or where you are, um, or which apps have access to data from your phone. Uh, this information sharing sounds a little sinister, but it can be really helpful. So like turning on location services um, helps you find my iPhone for one thing, but it also helps apps find stores near you or movies playing in your area when you search using a browser or um, a shopping app. And allowing apps to share info on your phone means that you can pull photos from your camera roll into editing apps, or you can use your contacts for um, other email apps. Um, or you can use the phone's microphone to record in listening or recording apps. Okay, back to the restrictions area. If you say don't allow changes, that means that the apps that you have already selected can still share that data, but your kids can't add additional apps to make changes to those previously approved. The next area is allow changes. Again, this is an area where you are restricting changes to areas that have already been set up in a different area of the of iPhone settings. You can restrict accounts, you can restrict cellular data use, background app refresh, which allows apps to pull data even when they're not in use, volume controls, and TV providers. Let's just talk um, a little about two of these. First, accounts. Selecting don't allow changes here means that your kid can't add any new Gmail or other accounts for email, contacts, or calendar. So they're limited to what's already been set up and presumably approved by you. Um, the other area is cellular data usage. Go to settings, then cellular, and scroll down to the use cellular data for area. So this area allows you to determine which apps use cellular data and which can't update themselves unless the device is using Wi-Fi. This is helpful if your kid is using too much cellular data and you don't have limits set up with your provider. You can turn off using cellular data for some of the big data hogs like YouTube or Netflix. And then in restrictions, select don't allow changes to cellular data usage and that way your kid can't go in and undo your restrictions. So the last restrictions area is Game Center, and this governs game apps that uses Apple's Game Center as a social media tool for playing um, games with friends. From what I understand, these functions are now built kind of directly into game apps, um, and you can restrict here whether your kid can play multiplayer games or can add friends or can use the screen recording option that some apps incorporate. Apparently some apps have their own social media networks built in and they don't use Game Center. So if you want to restrict your kid's ability to play with friends, just make sure that you do a little research on whatever specific game they're playing. So that covers the parental restrictions that iOS devices have already built in. If you want to turn your kid's phone into a dumb phone, delete all the apps that you can using the normal press and wiggle methodology and then turn on every restriction available, but most importantly, restrict the ability to install new apps. And that should do it. Remember, any changes that you make to this restrictions area will only govern that specific device, so be sure to go in and make the changes to each device that your child uses. I know from past experience that it's probably best to use the same passcode for every device to keep things simple. Leave your questions, thoughts, and experiences in the comments section to keep the conversation going, and thanks for watching.